What's up, guys? So uh, here are my predictions for UFC on ESPN. It uh, Whitaker versus Till, and uh, it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing, an amazing night. Uh, this could be a pay per view, to be honest. 15, uh, 15 fights, uh, and most of them are pretty awesome. So I can't waste any time because there's a, a lot to talk about. So I'll start with the. Uh, so with the main event, uh, Robert Whitaker versus Darren Till. So before I say my pick, I'm gonna say that I'm not confident on this one. Uh, I'm 55-45, uh, and I'm picking Darren Till. Um, so I have the upset, because I think Darren Till is slightly an underdog. What was he at right now? See, based on topology, it's a pick him, but based on some bookies, uh, Till is like plus 110, so it looks like it's a pick him. Till slightly the underdog, but uh, like again, I'm like 55%, 45% Darren Till. Uh, um, and, and here's the reason like, if you look at uh, Robert Whitaker's last two losses, are his last fight where he lost the title to Israel Adesanya, and before that, several years ago to uh, Stephen Thompson. What is it that those two guys have? Uh, they are tall, long, lanky very good very technical strikers fast technical strikers that's what Thompson and uh, Israel Adesanya are and that's exactly what Darren Till is um, and, and and the thing and it's not just that and the thing is Darren Till to me is superior in every single aspect of striking except for the power the 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 one punch knockout power for sure goes to uh to Robert Whitaker. I don't think anyone can deny that. You know he's done it so many times to uh, uh, Brad Tavares, um, Sosa. Although I think that was a head kick, but uh, so for sure Whitaker has the uh, the power, but speed, technique, reach, uh, height, footwork. Um, technicality overall you you have to go with Darren Till I, I don't see how anyone can disagree uh you're not gonna find a single fight where you see Darren Till just brawling and throwing uh wild loopy hooks and wild haymakers if you watch um if you watch Whitaker's last fight when he lost to Israel Adesanya he was literally doing stuff that it's like not even professional level i would say like he would run and just throw a left haymaker hoping that he would land on uh on adesanya which you know which he i guess if he would have landed or if he lands then he, you know, he'll probably uh hurt you or even knock you out uh but there were no combinations there were no uh no you know setting things up with his jab or anything like that uh he was just he was just trying to connect with those wild haymakers and it didn't work uh, versus Adesanya and and I don't think and obviously we don't know what Whitaker is gonna do versus Till but that same strategy I don't see it working on Till obviously puncher's chance of course uh, nobody can take that away from Whitaker but I just see Darren Till approaching this fight kind of in the same way that he approached the Gastelum fight where. I think he's gonna look for the finish, but at the same time be very, uh, very aware and very conservative. Uh, you know, another thing to mention is that you know nobody knows uh, exactly how much of the weight cut to welterweight uh, took a toll on Till's body. You know, I mean, he looks huge for a middleweight. Like he was dwarfing, uh, he was making Gastelum look little, and well, obviously Gastelum is a welterweight officially or whatever but uh but the fact that uh till was making welter where it's just insane because he looked huge as a middleweight and um you know the finally i get to talk about this that his win versus uh gastelum was a split because one of the damas judges gave it to gastelum uh that was no split that, that was a either 30 27 till or maybe 29 28 uh but yeah i just see darren till using his uh i always talk about his straight left it's a powerful weapon um uh, that he has and 
you know, who's to say how uh, Whitaker's chin after all the punishment that he took were from Adesanya, that's one. And then the ones that he took from Joel Romero where, I mean, he won, but but he, you know, his chin got 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 touched a lot versus Romero. And then the, also the other one with Romero and the one with Thompson. And, uh, and I'm picking Darren Till by TKO in the second round. Um, like I said, I think round one, he'll be very careful, kind of see what Whitaker is doing and uh, eventually catch him with either his straight left or something. Uh, but I have Till with the upset. And I'm being very vocal, not super confident. I don't see anyone to be confident, to be honest, either way. Uh, um, so yeah, Till, TKO, uh, round two. Then co-main event is Shogun Rua versus Rogerio Noguera. I have a uh, Shogun um, by knockout round one. Uh, so both of these guys are way past their prime. You know, a lot of people should, would argue that both of them should have retired by now. Uh, but but between the two of them, um, Noguera looks way, way more beat down. If you look at his last fight versus Ryan Spann, which lasted about two minutes, but it was still long enough for you to, to tell that the guy just looked old. I mean, it's not just the fact that he got knocked out. I mean, he got knocked out clean, you know, but but he looked old, like his movement, his footwork, his, uh, everything he was doing. I was like, you know, I, I rewatched it and I was like, wow, this guy should not be fighting anymore. Uh, Shogun on the other, Shogun is also looking already very slow and, uh, but not like Noguera, you know? And if there's something to talk about Shogun is in his last fight versus uh, Paul Craig, Paul Craig had him against the cage and was landing a lot of clean shots to Shogun's face and uh, and Shogun was still fighting back. He never got rocked, he never got uh, stunned or anything. So, and, and the thing is that Shogun punches hard and he goes for it. Uh, I, th I feel like one clean shot from Shogun is gonna knock Lil Nog out. And I think that's what was gonna happen. So I'm picking Shogun knockout round one. Um, you know, it's a trilogy. Uh, we we they already fought about five years ago and about 14, 15 years ago. Uh, the first one was the best, you know, one of those fights that will go down in history of one of the greatest. For sure, from Pride, I couldn't not tell if it's ever, you know, but for sure from Pride. And uh, But yeah, Shogun by knockout round one. And hopefully he retires and also Lil Nog retires, you know. Um, Shogun is almost 40, Noguera is 44, I think. Uh, but yeah, the Shogun striking looks sharper, uh, and he does not look beat down like Lil Nog does. So Shogun by KO. Um, then Fabrizio Werdum versus Gustafsson. I'm picking uh, Gustafsson by KO in the second round. Um, if you watch Fabrizio Werdum's last fight, he looked like absolute shit. I mean, uh, I think I picked him to win, to win, but I picked him to win in, in a stand-up fight, which is what it was. And he lost the stand-up fight. He, this guy looked like he was fighting in slow motion. I mean, he made Sam Alvey look like if he's a fast uh, striker. Uh, before that fight, Wardoon was suspended for two years for uh, PEDs. And you can tell, you know, I mean, coming back from those two years layoff without juicing, he was fat, he looked out of shape, his striking look in slow motion. And I'm not even kidding. If you go watch the fight, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, I, I, uh, Gustafsson is gonna absolutely take him to school in the striking department. Obviously, if we're doomed, gonna win this fight, it's gonna be by by taking uh, Gustafson down and submitting him, you know, if we're, if Gustafson is not aware of this and his team is not aware that that is literally the only chance that we're doomed has to win in this fight, especially in the, and specifically in the first round, because we're doomed is probably going to be gassed by the end of it. God, I'll be so upset, you know, if we're doomed manages to take him down in that first round and submit him, but uh, that is his window to win this fight, but but no, I don't see that happening. Uh, I see Gustafsson just, you know, making him look 
you know, amateur in the striking department. I think uh, he doesn't even have to use kicks. He shouldn't use kicks. Uh, that would be dumb because, uh, you know, Verdun could catch him and take him down. But I think uh, Gustafsson outboxes him uh, all around one. And eventually, round two, he cat he lands clean and puts Verdun away. Carlos Parson, Marino Rodriguez, I'm skipping that one. Because whatever I say, it's not going to happen. So go go listen to someone else on that one. Um, Paul Craig and... So this one, when it first came out, I picked a... Uh, this one is tough. It's, uh, it's one that I was almost 50-50. And once again, I am not confident. But I'm picking anti Golov by submission. Um, because I think his submission skills, his grappling is... A little bit better than Paul Craig's and Paul Craig likes to do that uh, when it comes to striking both of them are not really anything special um, even though uh, but and, and it's interesting because if you look at uh what was his last loss so anti Gulas lost when he fought Kutalaba he ate a lot and I'm talking five six seven huge shots before he went down which, which I was like, man, that's a nice chin that he has. But versus um, the other guy, uh, Oleg Siechik, whatever, every single punch that he landed rocked him and put him on wobbly leg. So I don't know if Kutalaba, all the damage that he did, you know, destroyed his chin or Oleg Siechik, whatever, just punches that hard. Uh, but Paul Craig is neither one of those guys, you know. I don't see him... Uh, being able to um, to just land punches that hurt anti Gulov, uh, another one that I'm not confident. I'm 60-40 anti Gulov. I'm picking submission round one for my anti Gulov. I think he will for sure uh, get a hold of Craig, take him down, and submit him. But if Craig manages to survive and uh, anti Gulov burn all his energy trying to uh, grapple him, trying to submit him. Uh, Paul Craig could very well take over and submit him and you know he, he could get the submission round two or three so anti Golov, I'm like 60-40 uh, I mean I agree with his odds you know Craig is minus 110 anti Golov is minus 120 so almost a pick him just like Till Whitaker you know that's a tough one uh, but I'm picking anti Golov because where he's strong, it's where poor Craig is strong. And but I think that Antigulov is a little bit better. But again, if this goes past the first round, who knows what could happen? So Antigulov submission one one. Uh, one two three four five. Then Alex Oliveira versus Peter Sobota. So Peter Sobota uh, hasn't fought in two almost two and a half years. And um, in his last fight, he lost to Leon Edwards. He got uh, outstruck and outgrappled. Um, and that's the thing, though. Leon Edwards is not really a grappler. He's more of a striker with a with um, with like, I guess a, a good basing uh, grappling. Oliveira is more of a uh, when he gets a hold of you, usually he is able to take you down. Um, I just see this fight. Uh, I'm picking Oliveira by submission in the second round. Uh, the combination of um, Sobota, two and a half year layoff, and not a, and getting out, and the way how Leon Edwards was able to control him in the ground effortlessly, uh, I think uh, Oliveira will be able to do the same. So Oliveira by submission, round two. I have one more, and then this one's just gonna be a quick one. Uh, Chimaev by Absolute complete total destruction round one versus Rise McKee. If you saw this guy's last fight, he's like a Walter Bay Khabib, you know. So quick uh and before I say this, tomorrow I will post I will leave the link to my Instagram that will take you to uh and I Instagram I usually post all my picks for the entire card. So till by KO or TKO round two, 55-45, not confident on that one. Rua by KO TKO round one. Gustafson by KO or TKO round two. Um, Antigo left submission round one, not confident either. Oliveira by submission round two. And Kamsa Chimaev, Kimaev, how do you pronounce it, by submission round one. And like I said, uh, tomorrow I will have all my picks posted on my Instagram and I will leave the link there. All right, guys, have a good one.